Good morning. I'm going to talk about the prodigal son. You know, we've heard the story so many times if you've been a Christian for a long time. Oh no, not that story again. We've heard it so many times since Sunday school. Today, I'm going to talk, I'm going to speak it with adult spiritual mind. For those not familiar with the story, I guess I have to run through it. It's found in Luke, the gospel according to Luke Chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told the father, I want my share of the estate now, instead of waiting until you die. So his father agreed to divide the wealth between his two sons. A few days later, this younger son packed up all his belongings, took a trip to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money on wild living. About the time the money ran out, a great famine swept through over the land and began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. The boy became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired men have food enough to spare, and here am I dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired man. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still long distance away, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you, against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf you've been fattening in the pen. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and have now returned to life. He was lost, but now is found. So the party began. Then the story goes on to talk about the eldest son and says, Why, I've been with you all this time, Dad. How come you never have a feast for me? The father said, I know, you've been a good son because you know, whether there's a feast for you or not, what I have is all going to be for you. It's all going to be yours. So regardless, so Jesus, understand that this was told by our Lord Jesus. Uh, he tells stories of the kingdom of God by way of parables. And some stories or parables of our Lord must be retold in new light as we grow older, as our faith grows stronger and deeper. I encourage you to read the story again. Luke 15 verses 11 to 32. This son really sank very low. The son ends up doing the job beyond which it was impossible in Jewish eyes to sink. You can't sink any lower. Feeding pigs for a Gentile master. He then does a further unthinkable thing. He returns home. He returns home. You should go away and disappear. Why? This is a small village. You know, people would talk. You know, look at that rich man, his son, what happened. So he returns home, which is really unthinkable, threatening to disgrace the whole family in the eyes of the village. The father runs to meet him. His elder brother was horrified, especially with what happened next. New clothes, shoes, a ring, and a feast? Really, Dad? Rather than the fearsome God of the Old Testament, we see God in Jesus relating to us a true picture of God. In Jesus, we see him forgiving sins, bypassing the temple system. He said to the lame man, 
Your sins are forgiven you. Take up your bed and walk. Unthinkable, horrifying. Who can forgive sins but God? And only in the temple, when all the rituals have been performed, Jesus came to a sinful world to establish the kingdom of God on earth. And in the kingdom of God on earth, it is as simple as that. I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And what did the father say in this story? Let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. A telling, in telling the story, Jesus is explaining and indicating his own practice of why, what he's doing, what, what he's doing, why he's doing what he's doing. Eating with sinners, <clears throat> with self-righteous Pharisees, text cheats like Zacchaeus. He let wanton women touch him. He exonerated the woman accused of adultery. There was no sin anyone did that he didn't welcome back when they ask for forgiveness. Hard heartedness and unbelief is the biggest sin and many of us are guilty of it. Pray that the Holy Spirit will impress upon our hearts that we need to return to God and find him in him, ever so ready to receive us back. So really and truly, when we think that we've done such egregious things that there's no way back to God, that we should just disappear and die. No, Jesus is here telling that there's no level that you've gone down to that if you come back, that you won't be welcomed back into the kingdom and there will be celebration in the kingdom of God. Not in heaven, you don't have to wait till then, but on earth. Our Lord Jesus came to earth to establish the kingdom of God on earth. And this is how it looks like. This is how God is. He was, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we, somehow we seem to think that the God in the Old Testament is vengeful. And this new God that Jesus preaches is a better God. No, it's the same God. If you really read the stories of the Old Testament, the, his love there shines through all the time. He cares. He cares so much. There was nothing that they had or did that did not come from him, that was not guided by him. That if we would confess our sins and return to him, there's no level that we have gone down to that he couldn't welcome us back and forgive us and celebrate with us and celebrate our return. We thank the Lord Jesus for the New Testament, for telling us of this love of God. And we pray that whoever you, like I said, hard-heartedness, arrogance is our biggest sin, that we cannot look at God and say, Lord, I really have fallen short. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark. God has a standard for us and we missed it. But it, this is a very oriental story in the sense that in, in the Near East, in that culture, you know, would not be unforeseeable that you would go to your father and say, hey, old man, give me the money now. I don't want to wait till you die. This is, well, to us, it's unthinkable. For to, them, to them, maybe it's not. And that he would go waste it all then hire himself out to feed the pigs, a Jewish man just serving a Gentile master, feeding, feeding swines and eating what the, the pigs ate. And he said, even in my father's house, you know, the, the servants eat better than I do. What does he do? Go back to the father to ask for forgiveness. Imagine the horror in his family, in his brother's eyes and said, oh my goodness, what will our neighbors think? Does it matter to his father? No. Does it matter to God? No. As long as you say, Father, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. And he will forgive us and celebrate with us. Celebrate our hope coming. Hope this little story will encourage you today. Whoever's listening with a 
with hardness of heart. Come to Jesus. And there's so many other stories in the gospel too. And I pray that you would read it. You know, I'm rereading these stories and finding it really comforting again. And I pray that you would have the same emotions too.